Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover what exactly happens on your M1 Finance account once you've transferred to another broker. We're going to go ahead and quickly take a look at M1 Finance, take a look at what exactly happens on the account side, what happens as far as activity. And here it's been several days so I started my transfer back on the last Friday which was June 4th of 2021. It is now the 9th of June 2021 and I can see that the transfer process has already started to happen. I can see my assets that have been transferred out of M1 Finance over to Merrill Edge. So we're going to go ahead and quickly cover the M1 Finance platform and what exactly happens to your account once you've transferred to another, another broker. Just in case you are looking to transfer to another broker such as Merrill Edge, Fidelity, Schwab and others out there. So. With that said, if you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it great, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video, and of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue, and let's go ahead and get into the video. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the M1 Finance account. Now, this is my own M1 Finance account. My wife also has a M1 Finance account where she has a Roth IRA, which we've kind of been building since back in January 2018 here on the channel. But this is mine, much smaller, a little under $10,000 um, yeah, $10, here on the account. So as far as what exactly happens on the account is right when I logged in, I can see that my account has been paused. So down on the bottom here, it says that your account is paused. Thanks for giving M1 a shot. Looks like you transferred money out of M1 and we're sad to see you go. If you change your mind or and want to start investing with us again, just open a new account. Now, my account's been paused. I can still see my holdings in here. So if I do select my holdings, I can see the shares are exactly 44. So one thing that happens on M1 Finance, when you do transfer to another broker, regardless of whatever broker it is, even if they have fractional shares, such as Fidelity, M1 Finance will sell your positions in order to have the nearest amount of whole shares. So in my case, I had 44 point X amount of shares. So they sold off the excess fractional shares and allowed me to have 44 complete shares. Here we can see our average share price and our cost basis for this, uh, these shares right here. So right off the bat, M1 Finance sells out of your fractional positions. And we can see here that we, we do have a cash balance sitting in the account. So from here, I head over to the activity tab. Now I sent in my transfer request back on the 4th of June. It is now the 9th of June. So Merrill Edge and M1 Finance communicated back and forth in order to transfer my stuff over. You know, this is showing other activity. So it's not a sell, not a buy. What exactly happened here is it was a fractional fractional share liquidation of you know X amount here. And depending on the fractional shares, I was credited $58.82 here of ticker symbol VTI. So whatever price VTI was at on the 7th of 2021, they liquidated that and credited my account. So right off the bat, what they do on your account is they freeze your account, they sell off your excess fractional shares, and they allow you to have you know the whole shares right there and a cash balance. So that's what they kind of do on your account on the M1 Finance platform. Now I transferred over to Merrill Edge. So I logged on to Merrill Edge today, just a few days after having sent in my transfer request here. And I can see that VTI has appeared in my account. I have 44 shares. So, you know, as we saw over here, we had 44 complete shares of VTI. So those 44 shares were transferred over. Now, if I click here and view my positions or my, my tax lot details, I don't actually see my cost basis for these positions. You know, here I can just see that I do have a quality of 44 here. I can see the value. So one thing that, I, you know, here I am making a video of this, but for example, if I wasn't recording this in a video, what I may want to do is go down here and just make a record of my average share price and my cost basis for these shares. That way on my notes or wherever I'm kind of keeping track of my 
my appreciation that I have received from this asset, then I could just kind of make a note of it and kind of keep track of where exactly this position goes in the future. Because right now, as it's transferring over, if the history kind of carries as of when it was transferred here, it may show negative on this account, but in my M1 Finance account, it may have showed being positive. So that's just something to consider as well. So here we can see that, you know, as of Wednesday the 9th, this position was down roughly 0.28. Now, I can kind of see when this all started to happen, and this was just today. So I logged on, not really expecting the whole transfer process to have taken place. But here we can see that there was a transfer that initiated. Uh, you know, there's a transfer in adjustments. You know, M1 Finance, generally when you close out of an account over with M1 Finance, they charge you a fee. If you look at their fees, when you do close out of an account, I believe it's a, it's a fee of 100 bucks. So I'll have to just kind of wait for this to settle. So I'm not 100% sure what the negative 141.18 is. So this is all from the M1 Finance side. So my 44 shares and that 141.18. So I'm not sure where, you know, how this will kind of get broken down. Once it's all completely settled, I'll come back in here and take a look at but as far as future goes, you know, I do plan on keeping VTI. I like to mainly invest in my accounts, uh, you know, pretty much hands off as much as I can be. The only account that I had really done much as far as trading, you know, in and out or doing options was on my Merrill Edge platform. So now that I have more of my assets here on this platform, I will more than likely, you know, keep most of my ETFs. I think most of my portfolio is going to remain in exchange traded funds and that I will probably dabble in some of the smaller mid cap businesses, just kind of buying up and doing some options on those ones as I have done here recently. Um, but that is pretty much it. And yeah, looks like that's about it, but we won't really cover a whole lot of Merrill edge here on the channel. We'll probably continue to cover M1 finance and start dabbling in some other areas of investing as well and saving money, making money and investing money. So that is basically it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section below. Have you used M1 finance? Are you considering using it or have you, are you considering transferring to another broker? You know, I would be interested in your thoughts. You know, we're still going to continue to use M1 finance on my wife's Roth IRA. We're also considering considering using M1 Finance for a custodial account for my son because he has a couple hundred bucks that he wants to put into the market, have it start working for him, and kind of go from there. So that is basically it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any other questions we can cover in the future. If you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it great. Hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.